Jesus promised. Jesus promised. He promised that he won't let you fall. If you just lean on him. Thank the Lord. Thank you. And this is the young lady we've been spending hours and hours of praying for. She's been walking, testimony, and walking miracle. Why don't we thank God for her presence today? We've spent hours and hours of lifting her name before the Lord. And God has revealed himself even on today. We serve the awesome and the great God. We serve the amazing God. He is. He's a healer. Yes, he is. Are there any testimonies in the house that he is? He is a healer. He is the one who makes us well. He is, he is the wonder. Yes, he is. He is the one that makes things all right. All right, man. Say that. Yeah. Heard, the preacher, heard the preacher say the other day, I know he's all right. Yeah, I know he's all right. But I, I tell you, he's the only one that's right. Say that. There is nobody like our God. He is, he is the awesome and the amazing God. Yes, he is. And I guarantee you, he won't. He won't let you fall. But the fact that about you, you got to lean on him. You got to be willing to lean on him. And he will not, he will not let you fall. You got to trust him. Trust him in the good times, the bad times. You got to trust him in the bad times. We got any mad folk in the room? Anybody mad in the room? But you're just mad. You're just downright angry about something. You need to trust him. Lean on it. When, when you don't think he's doing you the right way, lean on it. When, when you don't think he's answering your prayer like you think he ought to answer it, lean on him. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. He is the righteous himself. He is Jesus. I'll call your attention to Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. In the New Testament, the book is Hebrews. Chapters 9 verses 23 through 26. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 23 through 26. That's Hebrews. Brother told me even last night, he, he forget that he tells me here and there and there. Brother Bob Funberger, that will be 85 years old, he told me that the Bible tells me to cook coffee, make coffee for my wife. I said, what does the Bible say? That? He said, because the Bible says Hebrews. All right, now. Hebrews, so the yes. Bible says Hebrews, so that tells him that he needs to be need to. be making coffee yes, <laughs> for his wife. You you get that? I, I had to deal with had to deal with Bob Funberg and the chemical plant and his jokes for many many years. <laughs> Here we are, thirty years later, he's still telling his jokes. Just remember, we in Hebrews chapter nine, verses twenty three. 26. Hmm. He found that you would discover these words. Therefore, it was necessary that the copies of the things in the heavens should be purified with these. But the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifice than these. For Christ has not entered the heavenly places made with hands which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Not that he should offer himself often, as the high priest entered, enters the most holy place every year with blood of another. He then would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. 
I want to talk about the ultimate sacrifice, Christ. The ultimate sacrifice, Christ. He is the ultimate sacrifice. When we see firefighters, soldiers in the military, and police officers, names and faces plastered on our television screen, as well as internet, they have answered the last call. We say that they have given the ultimate sacrifice. <coughs> you see, it's this team of people who runs toward danger mm -hmm. as we get the opportunity to run from danger. It is a burning house that the firefighter runs to, runs into to put out flames while people are pulling out people and pets and even some plants to get them away from the burning flames. But here it is, some chosen men and women who have declared that they're willing to risk their lives in the midst of a burning inferno to save the lives of so many others. They run into the flames. They run into the flames knowing the danger of the flames. In more time than needed, they pay the ultimate sacrifice just to save us in our possessions. Police officers, men, women, boys, and girls, they risk their lives every single day, put at stake their lives and their families to make sure that law-abiding citizens are not attacked, robbed, and raped. And every now and then, across the television screen and through the internet, we find, even in the newspaper, that one of them have given the ultimate sacrifice. They've given their very own lives. Not to mention something that's real fresh on our mind now. The military men and women were going into danger zones so that we could have the freedom of speech, the freedom of worship, the freedom to say what we want to say, to print what we want to print. The freedom to act any kind of way we want to, and some of us take good advantage of it. The freedom to get mad anytime we want. It may not be justified, but we have an attitude on us sometimes, and if we were in a foreign country, we would not be privileged to have anything to say, anything to print. And we definitely wouldn't have an attitude. But it's because God has chosen military men, women, boys, and girls to risk their lives to save ours. We speak several languages. We interact with several groups of people. We even have interracial marriages because of men, women, boys, and girls who risk their lives daily, who leave their families at home so we can have the freedom that we have. Let me tell you, every now and then, the military will send a spokesperson to somebody's house. And the moment the woman and the children or the man and the children see a well-dressed soldier, Walking toward their front door, they realize that their spouse, their parents have paid the ultimate sacrifice. It's because they have chosen to lay their lives on the line just so we can live the way we want to live. I asked the police officer the other day, why do you want to do this? Why do you want to be involved in this? That person said to me, I want to make a difference. 
I want to go down in history as one who didn't cut bait and run. That person said to me in all intentional words that, that you have to understand when things get tough and police officers are being shot all around us, we know what we signed up for. We knew that we were going to face these days. Therefore, they're willing to give the ultimate sacrifice and to make it known to all men, I'm willing to die for this cause. Yeah. When we look at the text, we find a picture of Jesus. We find a picture, when we look at chapter 8 through chapter 9, we find the author writing a story and painting a picture of how men and women sins were forgiven. He paints a picture and it's a, it's just a a true picture of the tabernacle and how the tabernacle was built. He paints a picture of the children of Israel and, and those from one nation or the other and how their sins were forgiven. Yeah. He talks about the fact that, that bulls and, and heifers were killed. He talks about the fact that they were killed in order that the priest would go often into the presence of God. The priest would go often into the presence of God to plead the people case before God. But once a year, once a year, the great high priest, once a year, the high priest would go in and he would plead the case of the whole nation for the people. Well, you see, the tabernacle was built in such a way until you would walk into the tabernacle and then you would go into the first room. That was the room where the priest was allowed to go. And these priests would go in and if their lives weren't right, they would have a rope tied around them and they had bells on the skirt of their garments and if the bells stopped moving, they knew that he had dropped dead in the presence of God. So he would go off and so you know they had to have some preachers. <laughs> and they couldn't just have one preacher. Because if we look at those who, who preach today, we are not pure. We are not as the driven snow. We, we, our lives are still lives that are struggling with sin. But in those days, they would tie a rope around the preacher. He would go into the, the first room and he would plead the case other people before God. And when he went in, if his life wasn't in order, the bells would stop ringing. Let me tell you, sooner or later, the bells won't stop ringing. The bells would stop ringing, and when the bells stop ringing, that means he had died in the presence of God. Yes, sir. They would pull him out, put the rope around somebody else, and send him in. And then once a year, once a year, the high priest, Aaron was known as the high priest. Once a year, the high priest would walk in past the first room mm -hmm. and go past the curtain uh -huh. into the second room mm -hmm. and plead the case of the nation. He went into what was known as the most holy place. Yes, sir. It is the most holy place where only the high priest was allowed to go in. It was the most holy place where only the high priest would get along with God. And he would plead our case. The high priest would go in, and when he pleaded the case of the people, before he went in, he would take bullets. He would take heifers. And the blood would flow from these animals because without the blood, there is no remission of sin. When we pick up at the text, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, beginning at verse 16, in this particular pericope, pericope, it talks about a new covenant. It talks about a new testament. And the, the testator is the one that would have to die 
in order for the testament to be fulfilled. I want to let you know that we don't have to worry about bulls anymore. We don't have to worry about helpers anymore. We don't have to worry about the blood of the goats in the calves anymore. We don't have to worry about the scarlet wool anymore. We don't have to worry about the man of God sprinkling the blood of these animals on the people. Sprinkling the blood of these animals on the people. But a new testament. His name is Jesus. He is the ultimate sacrifice. He died once for all. And he died that one time for all. He suffered once for all. And he didn't have to suffer but that one time for all. You see, the old system dealt with food and drink and cleansing ceremonies. Some of the stuff we eat now, we couldn't be eating. Some of the places we go on our own volition, we couldn't go then. It was concerned, the old system was concerned with cleansing through ceremony. It was a physical revelation. It was a physical statement. It was a physical place of worship. And because the tabernacle was a physical place of worship, it was just there until a better place of worship came along. This system was in place because Jesus had not arrived physically on the scene. This place was a place for them to come and the whole nation would come. And the man of God would plead the case. I hear you, somebody said, I'm so glad I don't need Pastor Davis to plead my case. Because he doesn't all have it all together. He doesn't, he doesn't do the right thing. He, he, he struggled with his own stuff. The priest regularly went into the first room of the tabernacle. The high priest entered into the second room behind the curtain, the, the most holy place. And he only did it once a year. I'm so glad that you're not depending on me to go in and plead your case once a year. Matter of fact, the high priest not only pleaded the people's case, but he also pleaded his own case when he took in the blood. It was a place of atonement. It was a place where the blood was offered for the high priest's sin and for our, the nation's sin. And while he was there, he was offering, and, it, and the text gives revelation to the fact what the old people used to say, he offered sin of commission and sin of omission. He offered us sin. He offered sin for those who were present that knew what they were doing when they were sin. Is there anybody in the room who knows what you're doing when you're sin? Yes. Anybody in the room who knows when you're doing the wrong thing? You know when you're mad about the wrong thing? You know when you're just rebellious? Yeah. Yeah. And then there are some people, all of us, who, who sin and not knowing that we're sin. So the high priest would take in on the sins of omission and the sins of commission. The problem is it wasn't freely open. Getting kind of warm in here. It wasn't freely open. It wasn't freely offered and it wasn't freely open all the year long. This system was a system that was used once a year by the high priest. These gifts were, were not able to cleanse the conscience of men. They didn't qualify to cleanse the conscience of man. In other words, the reason why people are doing anything they want to do in the 21st century is simply because their conscience has not been changed. Their hearts have not been changed. Their lives have not been changed. Whenever I can see a person talk crazy to their mom and daddy, woo, their conscience are messed up. Whenever, whenever I see a person that will stand flat-footed in the face of mom and daddy and say crazy stuff, they need to be born again. They need to be saved, and their conscience needs to be delivered 
by the word of God. Whenever I can see a person that, that won't go to work, but they want to take everything that you have, rob you, burglarize you, and you struggling to make ends meet, and they really don't care, it's because their conscience has not changed. Whenever, whenever I see a man that was glorifying himself just a few years ago, he was getting glory out of going to senior citizens' houses, and he didn't want to deal with senior citizens that was in their 60s and 70s. They had to be 80 and 90 years old, and he would rape these old women. And he would just prowl around as a serial rapist and, and do his own dirt any way he wanted to do it. And he would, he would take advantage of these women who couldn't even walk without a cane. All right. I know. Who had to have the aid of a wheelchair to get around. Who had to have the aid of somebody else to help them make it. When I look at that, I see a man whose conscience has not changed. The text declares that Christ came, and he came as a great high priest, and he's available even to the rapists. He's available to the prostitutes. He is available to the drug dealer and the drug taker. He's available to the church per person that does none of that, but just got a bad attitude. Let me tell you, he's available to you. The Bible discusses with us that, that the great high priest is Jesus the Christ. The high priest, what he did was not sufficient for this day. This system was in place until a new system was put in place. And when Jesus came, the new system was put in place. You see, when Jesus died on Calvary, I'm, I'm almost through. I mean, I'm almost through. I'm almost, if you're going to shout, you better shout right now. When Jesus showed up, when Jesus showed up, he is God himself. God got off in a place called Bethlehem, Judea. All right. Because the system was broken. When we look at systemic racism, the system is broken. When we look at people that will look down their nose at other people and think they're better than they are, the system is broken. Right. Yeah. When we look at people who don't spend time in study the Word of God, but they want to tell you about the Word of God, the system is broken. Right. Jesus came to fix the system. Jesus Christ came that the system will be forever fixed. You see, Jesus Christ has a way of touching our conscience. Not only does he cleanse us spiritually, he cleanses our conscience. When we don't need to do the things we used to do. When we don't need to act the way we used to act. Jesus the Christ has given us permission to walk into the Holy of Holies for ourselves. We don't have to wait till the preacher shows up. We don't have to wait till he walks into the, the most holy place. It's because Jesus has paid the price on Calvary. Right. The great high priest, Jesus Christ, the, he gives the ultimate sacrifice on Calvary for you and for me. It's because of the blood that he shed it on Calvary. It's because he died on Calvary. It's because they killed him on Calvary. He became the ultimate sacrifice. Not for us physically, but for us spiritually. That's why, that's why the Bible tells us. The Bible tells us very clearly. The Bible tells us very, very clearly. That by his stripes, we are healed. Let me just bust somebody's sanctified bubble right here. Now, when he says, by his stripes, we are healed. He's talking about the stripes that they put on Jesus physically. That's right. That we are healed. Yeah. But the healing doesn't take place with us physically. Right. The healing takes place with yeah. us spiritually. That's right. And so when you go and you pray for a sick person, if they're sick from a demon, you ought to pray this prayer. But if they're sick just from a physical healing, you ought not pray this prayer. Uh -huh. By his stripes are we 
we heal. We are healed by the beatings, the 39 lashes they put on him. His strength heals us spiritually. All right now. It's a spiritual healing. It's, it's a spiritual healing. He died once. Involved. The Bible says to us that the stuff that was going on, the system that was in place, was just copies of the truth. Yeah. It was just a copy of the truth. These were just copies of things that are yet to come. The tabernacle paints a picture of Jesus the Christ. Mm -hmm. When you look at Exodus chapter 25, you will find the colors in the tabernacle. Yes, yes. You will not find in the tabernacle blue. Yes. You will find red. You will find white, you will find gold, and you will find purple. Yeah. If you look at the New Beginning logo, you will see blue, yeah. you will see red, yeah. you will see white, yeah. you will see gold, and you will see purple. Yeah. Because this, these colors in the tabernacle was telling us, was warning us that Jesus the Christ is yet to come. Yeah. And so the covers that, that Moses put in the tabernacle were designed that way so men, women, boys, and girls to see the own coming of the greatest system in the world, the system of Jesus the Christ. It is Christ who gives the ultimate sacrifice. And he did it over 2,000 years ago. Yes, he did. He died over 2,000 years ago. My Lord and my God, he became the ultimate sacrifice yes. over 2,000 years ago. He, Jesus, blew his heavenly character. Yes. He died on Calvary. Yes. Red his precious blood. Yes. He died on Calvary. Yes. Gold, a non tarnable substance. It goes on from now on. Meaning once you're saved, you can never be unsaved. Yeah, Lord. No. Purple his raw color. I mean, it is, he's an expensive God. Now, let me tell you, your salvation is free. But your salvation is not cheap. God did it for you. And White describes the fact that once he washes us from our sins, we become whiter than snow. Yeah, thank God for Jesus. Over 2,000 years ago, he brought in a brand new system. He came down through 42 generations. Thank God for Jesus. He got off in a little place called Bethlehem of Judea. Thank God for Jesus. He was born by birds and caught men. Thank God for Jesus. He is the ultimate sacrifice. He walked these Monday shows. Opening blinded eyes. Yes, he did. Thank God for Jesus. He raised men, women, boys, and girls from the dead. Thank God for Jesus. He walked these shores and, and never committed sin, and therefore he's qualified to talk to God on our behalf. This same Jesus did no harm. He, he only did what was right. But let me tell you, over 2,000 years ago, many men killed him. Mean men beat him. Mean men took him back and forth to court. Mean men nailed him to the cross. They raised up the cross. Even after he, after he had said, if you lift me up, I'll draw all men out of They lifted him. They nailed him. And they lifted him. They nailed him. And they lifted him. They lifted him. The sun refused to shine because they lifted him. The moon dripped down with blood because they lifted him. Centurion showed and said, surely this must be the Son of God because they lifted him. The earth reeled and rocked like a drunken man because they lifted him. Jesus died that day. He died on the skull hill called Calvary. He gave the ultimate sacrifice. It was a voluntary sacrifice. He died for you and he died for me. He is the sacrifice that satisfies our God. He died on Calvary. They took him off the cross. Laid him in a barber too. It was a barber too because he didn't need it too long. It was a barber too because it had not been laid in by any man. But out of that third day morning, he got up with all power. Then he chose the back of the rest of the tree. He gave 
tell the back is brand new too. And the Bible says that same Jesus that got up early that third day morning caught a cloud. Got out of here. The text declares that this system did not, did not introduce the truth of what really needs to be going on and forgiveness. So he caught a cloud and got out of here. And some of us just like just like the old, the, the disciples of old, we are still gay. And Jesus said, don't worry about it. The same Jesus that left him. The angel told him, the same Jesus that left you on the cloud. He's coming back on the cloud. The text declares that he is in heavenly places. And he's making intercession for you and for me. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father. The hand of power, the hand of strength, the hand of conviction, the hand of forgiveness. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father, making intercessions for you and for me. Thank you. Thank the same Jesus. The angel says, Why standing you here today? That same Jesus that left here on the cloud, he's coming back on the cloud. The same Jesus. He's not coming back in a limo. He's not coming back in a Jaguar. He's not coming back in a Ford or a Chevrolet. He's coming back on a cloud. Paul picks this thought up again. Paul picks this thought up again in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning in verses 13 through 18. Paul picks this thought up and Paul says, Behold, let me just share with you. I would not want you to be ignorant as some do. Concerning those who are falling asleep. Those who died in Christ. Believing this story. That Jesus died over 2,000 years ago. That Jesus rose from the dead. I don't want you to be ignorant. Concerning your loved ones. Who have fallen asleep. Because the day is coming. When Jesus the Christ. Will crack the sky. And the dead in Christ. Shall rise first. Uses this word prevent. King James says, and those of us who remain should not prevent those who are asleep. But when you do the word study on that word prevent, what it really says is those of us who remain shall not proceed, shall not go before those who are asleep. What Paul is saying right here, those who are dead gonna rise first. Shall be caught up in it. We shall be caught up in it. We shall be caught up in it. And Paul says, comfort one another with these words. Let them know that they ain't got no problem. Let them know that they shouldn't be crying and weeping as those who have no hope. But as St. Jesus, who paid the ultimate sacrifice. He's on his way back. When you look at the world in which we live, you know he's on his way back. We not only have rumors of war, we have war. And believe it if you want to, we're in the midst of a war. We're in the midst of an all-out war. It doesn't matter if we fight a shot or not. We're in the midst of a war. And the war is intensified. And the fact of the matter is, we need to call men to favor in Jesus Christ. We need to tell men that Jesus is the one who makes a way out of nowhere. We need to tell men that if you're going to be saved, if you're going to heaven, if you're going to survive, you need Jesus. We need to tell young people, stop doing the dancing. Too many people are tick-tocking. Too many people how to dance. I mean, look, Billy Boy, he knows how to do it. But we need to show them how to read the word, how to study the word, how to exemplify the word, and the word live through them. Because Jesus is coming back. And I don't want you to be left behind. I'm not going to be left behind. Because I believe the story that Jesus died for my sins. He was buried in a barber tomb. And he rose early that third day morning for you and him. It's a simple thing just to tell men 
that Jesus died. Tell those children, regardless of who they are, regardless of how young they are, Jesus died for you. Jesus was buried just for you. Tell those children that if you had been the only person on planet Earth, Jesus would have died for you, baby. He gave his life as a volunteer sacrifice. Tell them that Jesus has paid the ultimate sacrifice. Tell them that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose again. And if you just receive this story, you can be saved. You can be born again. Right here, right now. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You want to come to Jesus. The door is open. The door is open. The door is open. The door is
Sister Paul was two stepping back then. Brother Mitchell was doing the Jane Brown. They thought I had forgotten all that. Thank y'all so much for being conscious, being in tune. Father God, we thank you for this privilege of giving. We thank you, Father, for blessing us. We thank you for all that you do. We thank you for jobs, for money, for increasing income. We ask you to bless us now as we come to give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. If you want to give to the New Beginning Church, if you want to give to the New Beginning Church, please do so by uh, giving your offering online, uh, on sale, by lifting God Jesus, bring it down just a little bit of this. Lifting, lifting God Jesus, bring it down, bring the music down a little bit. Amen. Lifting God Jesus at Yahoo.com. Our Zelle account is lifting God Jesus at Yahoo.com. Our Zelle account. If you want to give by mail, you can mail your offering, your tithes, your gifts into PO Box 503. Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. We'll ask this side to stand. And follow first and questions from the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. We'll ask this side to stand. Follow first and questions from the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. church family. We're praying um, in the loss of their, pen, their uh, pastor. We're also praying for bereavement for the Kendall Wright and Calendar families. And then for um, sick and healing, we're praying for Benny Tisby, uh, Tommy Hemingway Jr., Lillian Darrington, Greg Tillman, Stella Collins, Audra Page, Bob and Betty Funberger, uh, Kylan Brown, Martavius Tate Horton, Karen Birchfield, Crystal Raymond, Charlie Cameron, Cheryl Burney, Gladys Flores, 
Cora Woods, and Rayshawn Merrill. Thank you. Amen. There's the key. Stand up, key. There's the key, y'all. My goodness. My goodness. Hallelujah. He ain't missing me or me. I don't know. He's even good. I better go to his grandmama's house and eat. Let's just want you stand. Tell us your name and, and uh, tell us how you got here. You don't have to tell us how you were born and all that, but just. Just stand up and tell us your name. And we're glad to have you today. We can't hear you. I want you to just talk loud. You can talk loud over your grandma. You can pull your mask down over your grandma. Now you can speak loud. Okay. My name's Armani Edwards, and my grandma goes to this church, so that's me. Glad to have you with us. We spent many hours, as I said, praying for this young lady. Thank you so much for, for being a part of our choir this morning. Also, thank you for being a part of our service. Amen. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. God is in the healing business. He is the awesome and the amazing, the amazing God. Let's pray for these as we seek to benefit, to benefit. Father God, we thank you, Lord, and we bless your name. God, we praise you, Father God, for who you are, for what you do. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us and keeping us. Lord, we thank you, Father, for just being good and being God. Now, Lord, we lift up those on this premise. We pray for your empowerment during bereavement. We pray for Pastor Williams' church and his family. We thank you, Father God, for his ministry. Thank you for him. We ask you to lift up the Genesis Church. In times like these, Father God, we ask you to bless them to see Jesus. Hold him more dearly. We pray for his family, Father God, that you will bless them. And that you will hold them. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to heal and touch every person that we know of that's on this list or not. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to be God. We pray that you intervene in our current world events. We ask you to push the devil away. We pray, Father God, that you bind the acts of the devil. Grant us peace in our war. Give us hope in times like these. We pray, Father God, that we would not be negatively impacted during these periods of time. Lord, we ask you to keep our churches strong. That every church that's open in Jesus' name will continue to run and tell men, women, boys, and girls about the goodness of Jesus Christ. Lord, we praise you now. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for his ultimate sacrifice of voluntarily giving his life for us. We thank you for the miracles that you've shown us thank you. and thank blessing you. us every day. Thank you. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, be glory, and demand. Until we meet again, let us sing together. Understand, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, In I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. God bless you and God keep you, is our prayer. Thank you so much for joining us.